Hello, how are you? You know, I've often asked how to set up AutoCAD in such a way that it always prints correctly. I'm afraid there's no idiot-proof method of setting your AutoCAD up in such a way that it never goes wrong. Nonetheless, I recommend the use of page setups in order to organise the way in which we print. How does that work? Let me show you. Let's imagine that I've got far enough here in model space to want to start arranging my layout ready to print. When I change into paper space, which I will do here by clicking on my layout tab, as you can see, I'm not actually ready to do anything. I've no idea what paper size I have, so no idea if the objects I've drawn in model space would actually fit on the paper in the size I have imagined I would want to use. And really I recommend, before doing anything else, setting up viewports and so on, deciding what kind of paper I'm going to use and setting up the, the page accordingly. Now in this video, we'll be looking at how to set up a page in standard sizes, how to do page setups with user-defined paper sizes, and also how to use scaled sizes. So basically we have a drawing which we've actually designed for, say, A1, but we want to print it on A3 paper because our printer doesn't print anything bigger. And in the course of this particular video, we'll be talking about why we should want to use page setups at all. So let's start with our standard size, and I'm going to go for A1. Now, where do we find our page setup manager? Now, that's a very easy question because there are several answers. We find it here, for example, if we go to the Layout tab, do a right click, we find it here page setup manager. If we go to the AutoCAD icon and look at print, we also find our page setup manager there. We also find it here. If we go to output, there we also find our page setup manager. So let's activate that by clicking here and we'll make a new one. Now I'm going to name this AutoCAD PDF DIN A1. Now why do I name it like that? Well we'll see later why it's a good idea to have at least two pieces of information in the setup name. The printer we're going to use and in this case I'm going to use the PDF printer from AutoCAD and the intended paper size which in this case will be A1. Okay. Now, here we see the first reason why I recommend using page setups, basically because it's not more work than just printing normally. We have pretty much the same information which has to be put in here, the same decisions have to be made, and the only exception, in fact, is that we don't have a print button here at the bottom. And, okay, there's a couple of things here which are missing as well, but basically it's the same. So, A1, AutoCAD PDF, I have to actually set the printer. There it is. I'll take the high quality print. It doesn't cost any extra. The fact that I've actually named it here AutoCAD PDF doesn't mean I don't have to choose it, of course. And then we'll go for the actual paper size here. I'll take ISO full bleed A1. Here we go. Uh, that's 841 by 594. What to plot? I like to use window definitions. So that would be zero zero as a bottom right enter eight four one comma five nine four if I have it correctly in mind eight four one five nine four that's good and I usually like to just fit it to the paper okay it's not exactly one to one but the difference hasn't yet bothered anybody plot style tables is a subject for itself I'm just going to take the standard AutoCAD monochrome plot style table which basically means that independent of the colors on the screen everything gets printed black. Don't forget to click plot transparency. Landscape is correct. Everything else looks like it's how I would like it and we say OK. So I've defined a page setup or a paper size. I haven't actually said we want to use it though so I have to set that as current. Close and now I have something I've defined 
as an A1 sheet. So I could insert my frame, my sheet title and so on if I so desired. So that would be how to do it with a standard size. What about user-defined paper sizes? Well that's also quite easy. Let's say I have a very large sheet of paper. I'm going to make that 1200 millimeters long and 841 millimeters high. So it's basically like an A0 drawing but a lot longer. I go again to output Page Setup Manager. I'm going to mark the one I've already done because it will mean one or two things will be taken over from the one which I've marked. I'll say New. That will then be AutoCAD PDF and I'll just write the size in and then I know exactly what it is if I ever use it again. Say OK. Then under Properties I can click here to Custom Paper Sizes, Add, Start from Scratch. I'll make the width 1200 and the height 841. Millimeter sounds good. Go further. I'm going to just play with the sizes here. This is obviously a, a Windows thing because it's in German but I'm sure you can work that out from your own program. These just go on, finish, OK, OK. So I've set the paper size. I haven't used it yet though. So in other words I've defined it but I haven't used it. So there I can take it. Of course it's scaled 0 0.7148 so it's obviously not one to one. Why not? Because I haven't defined my window. Do that. 0, 0 for bottom left. 1200 comma 841 for the top right. Enter. That's more like it. Everything else can stay the same. Say OK. And if I want to use that, set as current, close, and there I have a very large piece of paper. OK. Now, I said, what about scaled sizes? Well, what I mean by that is, say we've made a PDF which we can send to an architect or a customer or whatever, and, well, they can print it out if they want. It's great for sending things via email. But what if we want to actually print it out and we don't have a proper plotter, we just have a normal A4 or A3 printer? It's not a problem to have a page setup which can do that as well. Let's do that then here over our page setup manager. I'll mark that one, say new, and I'll call that as well after my printer, which is actually a brother. And I'll say it's DIN A1 on A3. So basically the original PDF would be an A1 but the actual output will be A3. So I have to select my printer of course which is this one. Paper size would be A3. Landscape is correct. My window will probably be correct but I'll define it again. So the area I'm actually going to print will be my A1 size which is 841,594. As we can see when it's scaled it's half the size which fits. Everything else I can leave as it was. Say OK. And then I could actually set that as current if I wanted to. And then it would print A1 on A3. So that's our standard sizes, user defined paper sizes and scaled sizes. I mentioned as well already, one of the reasons I like to use page setups is it's not more difficult than just printing directly. What are the other reasons which I think are reasons for actually using page setups? Well, one of the reasons is, of course, when I then go to print, I have a selection of preset paper sizes which I can then use to print without having to go through all the rigmarole of setting everything up. If I've used them and they've worked, I know they'll work the next time. Another reason is I can import them, so if I don't already have settings in my existing drawing, so page setups, I can import them from drawings where I've already set them up, which is very useful, I'm sure you'll agree. But also, if I use batch plot to print a number of drawings at once, what I can actually do is adjust my page setups as I want. For that reason, I always think it's a good idea to have the paper size in the layout tab. So this could be sheet 1.1 DIN A1 for example and then when I see it here in the list it would say DIN A1 here I could match it with the correct page setup. Here I would see that one would fit I could use that one or I could use that one if I wanted on on paper. So there's, those are already 
two reasons why, or three in fact, why I think using page setups is such a good idea. So that was it for just now. If you have any questions to this or other videos or want to contact me for other reasons, perhaps you have suggestions for further videos which I could do, well, feel free to contact me. The information which is necessary for that will appear just now here, as well as being in the notes of the video. Well, that was it for just now. But if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me. Or if you would like an AutoCAD course, then feel even freer to contact me. The information which is necessary for that will be appearing right now, just there, as well as being in the notes of the video. Feel free also to subscribe for my YouTube channel, and then you won't miss any further videos. And I look forward to seeing you later. Bye.